on uh, day two of our uh, journey here on our, our Maui uh, adventure. Uh, we just finished our layover at the hotel. We're back at the airplane now. We're scheduled departure in about 15 minutes. Um, Captain and I have already uh, pre-flighted the airplane. It was a little bit rushed getting to the airplane. Uh, we had about an hour uh, just to get it ready. But we've already pre-programmed the box. We've completed our ramp checks. We've received the ATIS, the weather here. It's a beautiful day, 24 degrees. The winds are 050, 18 gusting, 27. A little bit windy, but clear skies. And uh, we'll be departing off of runway 02 here in Maui. We're just waiting uh, 10 minutes before pushback or scheduled time is when we can receive our clearance. That's in about six minutes from now, so we're all good to go. Captain's all set up, and uh, we're just gonna wait for that. We'll get our clearance, then we'll get our pushback clearance, taxi up for runway two, depart. You'll get a beautiful view of the mountains off the left as we head north, and then on to Vancouver, expecting a very smooth flight. Layover was very good, had a great time on the beach. <laughs> like I said, join the airline, Get up on the big planes and you'll get a chance to do this. We'll talk to you as soon as we get our clearance. Bye-bye. Clearance Air Canada 058. Air Canada 058, heavy my clearance. Canada 058, requesting uh, flight level 340 and airways to Vancouver. We are 10 minutes from pushback. Air Canada 058, heavy, stand by. Air Canada 058, heavy, uh, flight level 350. Uh, flight level 340 is not available. Flight level 330 now, no delay, or flight level 350 after 2249. 330 no delay. Yeah, 330 no delay would be good for Canada 058. Okay, Canada 058, heavy, stand by. Okay, Canada 058, heavy, is close to the Vancouver airport by radar vector 8 pack as filed, maintain flight level 330. After departure, flight is 020. Departure frequency will be on 120.2, squawk 2627. Okay, so we've received our clearance. Now it's time for me to brief what we're about to do. Normally we'd, we'd, we'd brief a SID, which we have in our, our books as different departures, and we'd go through that as uh, John did out of Vancouver. I mean, out of Calgary, excuse me. But uh, now we don't have a SID, it's just headings. So basically, it's going to be 020 heading, which I've said here. And if you remember, the initial clearance is to 330, 33,000 feet. So I'm going to set that in the uh, altitude window to make sure I just, I'm not going to go above that. Or uh, 330 is set there. I'm going to talk about uh, any kind of noise abatement uh, procedures out of uh, Maui. And for runway two, it says climb straight ahead until one mile clear of shoreline before commencing turns. A little depictive picture on how to do that. But they're going to probably they're going to give us radar vectors and tell us when to make that turn towards um, APAC. The other thing I want to talk about is our uh, TOCA, or our Terrain Obstacle Clearance Altitude, which here we find on our 1010 pages says all runways TOCA 700 feet. I'm going to set that on my side and so will the And it's 700 set. And it's set on my side. If it was very cold, below zero degrees, we sometimes add a temperature correction to the altitude to account for that, but it's very hot here, 24 degrees, we don't need to do that. So that's basically what TOCA is, is if I do have an engine failure, that's the altitude, the lowest altitude I should level off at. I'm going to climb to at least 700 feet before I lower the nose, try and accelerate, gain airspeed, and then clean up the uh, whatever problem is with the uh, other engine. Other than that, we'll be uh, departing off of uh, runway 2. We're sitting right here on gate 21. We're going to push back, turn right, taxi here for Alpha. It'll be a quick taxi. Get on the line for runway two and take off and head head north. Ground United 584 Heavy. We're uh, looking at a maintenance issue here. We're going to be sitting here for a second. United 584 Heavy, Roger. Uh, you got an estimate? How long is that take? Uh, unknown at this moment, right? Uh, hopefully not too long. I'll, I'll try to update you as soon as I can. Uh, 584. 584 Heavy, Roger. Uh, nice
high ground. Two five one four. Ten past the risk call. Over to the puncher. Two five one four. Air Canada zero five eight marker. You ready for? Permanent. Air Canada zero five eight heavy runway two clear for takeoff. Clear takeoff runway two. Air Canada zero five eight. Check the thing. Turn off. Okay, completed. Any IH assigned? Just check. Patch our auto weather radar terrain. Terrain. And transponder is DARA on the left side, 26227. Four takeoff check is complete, 141, 147, 155. 020 heading for radar vectors to APAC. And, uh, And departure frequency is tuned in for you, 120.2 on the right side. Two. 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 Can 
Delta 0580, TF, approach, Roger. Traffic 11 o'clock in one, two miles opposite direction, company Boeing 737, level flight over 35 ground. Okay, we just passed at our position at 28 north and 155 degrees west, and it's time to call uh, San Francisco Radio to file a position report with them. So on our uh, left HF, when uh, the frequency is free, I will uh, give them a call and uh, file our position report. Climb to reach flight number 370. Time zero zero one zero. Report number three zero. Time now zero 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 and two zero seconds. Doing well for fuel. We're two minutes ahead of our scheduled flight plan right now. We're going to get there, or we were there at twenty three fifty eight, and we have twenty seven decimal two tons of fuel. We're minimum fuel there is twenty one five, so we're five point seven tons above that. We estimated having twenty six two. We're one ton above even what we estimated. San Francisco, Air Canada, 058 position. 058, correct, Air Canada, 058, 28 north, 155 west at 2358, flight level 350, estimating 35 north, 150 west at 0101, 39 north, 145 west is next, fuel 27.2. 27.02. That's correct. Okay, Air Canada 058. But just to review uh, our flight plan, we're flying uh, Fin 692, 767 uh, 300 with Pratt & Whitney uh, engines. This is a sister ship to uh, Fin 691, the airplane we brought yesterday from uh, Calgary to uh, Maui. And for the flight plan today, fuel flow factor was plus four, meaning it uh, burns 4% uh, more than uh, what the uh, performance charts uh, say it uh, should burn. Right now, the only uh, MEL or defect we have with the aircraft is a uh, MEL for a potable water indication. Uh, just the one of the indicators in the uh, cabin for water quantity on board is not functioning, but the one below where they fill the water is uh, working. So that's only a small issue. The planning today was at cost index 19, and we're actually filed at a hard speed of Mach decimal 78 on the ocean. Initial flight plan altitude was flight level 340, climbing shortly to, after that to flight level 350, which is where we are right now. The great circle distance en route was 2,326 nautical miles from Maui to Vancouver. So if you do a straight line from uh, Maui to Vancouver along the globe, that's what you'd get. The uh, actual track miles we're flying are 2,417. So the route's chosen for a minimum cost, uh, which in this case is uh, basically a minimum time track today with uh, the flight planning system calculating for the uh, uh, best winds, uh, uh, choosing a route based upon the best winds. So our routing's reviewed down here where we're we went uh, direct to APAC, which is an intersection, then Zulu, and then by geographic uh, positions, uh, 28 north degrees, uh, 28 degrees north, 155 west, 35 north, 150 west, 39 north, 145 west, 41 north, 140 west, 46 north, 130 west, and then to an intersection, Sherry and Pekka, doing the Shark 7 arrival planned into uh, Vancouver uh, for landing. And right now we're showing uh, uh, on schedule for landing at uh, 9.10 uh, local time uh, today. Estimated flight today was uh, 5 hours and 26 minutes uh, from uh, gate to gate. Uh, for uh, Vancouver today, uh, weather's good, uh, but we're using uh, Seattle as an alternate. And uh, we are on an ETOPS flight, so for a majority of this flight we're more than uh, uh, 60 minutes away from a usable airport as it's uh, pretty much all water from uh, Maui to Vancouver. And for that period of time, when we're outside of uh, 60 minutes from an airport, we have to designate uh, ETOPS alternates. Today's an unusual one where we have um, two ETPs, or equal time points. 
which uh, it'll give us a position where at that position uh, it's a decision before we get to that point Maui is the uh, airport we're using to divert to if we have a, a problem and after that point it is uh, San Francisco and the position is very close together uh, with one crossing uh, north 36 and 45 and then just a few miles later north 46 49 we changed the alternates to Maui and uh, Eugene, Oregon. And uh, it'll give us the reason. Uh, it looks at worst case scenario uh, of, of three options. One of them, uh, uh, engine out. One of them, a decompression with engine out. And one of them, just a uh, um, decompression, all engines. Uh, and looks at the worst case scenario. And uh, all done by the computer. Decompression was the worst case scenario here, and uh, sorry, decompression engine out was the worst case scenario in the first scenario, and just plain uh, decompression all engines was the worst case scenario. So it'll give us uh, uh, fuel uh, to, in the worst case scenario, descend down to uh, 10,000 feet and proceed to one of our ETOPS alternate if we have to. And for that reason, we carry a little bit of extra fuel to make that work. So for planning today, we needed uh, 33.6 or 33,600 kilograms of uh, fuel, which the burn itself from uh, Maui to Vancouver was 24.3, with 0.3 required for taxi. Uh, we carry a uh, small contingency uh, based upon the uh, additional percentage of fuel we carry. Uh, the alternate to get to Seattle, if we had to go there, is 2.2, and final reserve, uh, keeping 30 minutes, uh, 2. Uh, tons extra for that. And ETOPS, uh, over and above what was required just to go from A to B, uh, we carry 3.7 tons extra, and that caters to the worst case scenario of having to uh, deal with either decompression, decompression engine out, or engine out uh, at the worst case scenario. The route today was uh, good weather. off the flight planning system showing us the route departing uh, Maui and up to Vancouver. A little bit of an arc there to deal with uh, the best winds en route for us. And you can see part way along the route there's a jet stream crossing our track just over around 39 degrees north latitude. Uh, each triangle on the uh, shows uh, 50 knots of wind. So the area we're crossing the jet stream uh, is showing 160 knots of wind with uh, 50 knots for each triangle and 10 knots for each line like that. So 160 knot wind uh, from left to right and the jet core is located at flight level 360. We're planning to cross there at uh, 35,000 feet. Okay, right now we're going to uh, set up for what we think is going to be the approach. Uh, right now we've requested an ATIS for Vancouver and uh, it hasn't arrived uh, yet. Uh, HF data link's a bit slow, but based upon uh, current conditions uh, that previously, it was showing uh, the, uh, this is the wrong airport he just gave me, he's trying to screw me up here with the uh, Toronto airport. Nice job. It's showing uh, runway 26 right in use in uh, Vancouver with the winds uh, out of the south at uh, 17, guessing 22. So I'm going to program the, our, our flight plan uh, had us filed for a uh, Shark uh, 7 arrival into uh, Vancouver, and we're anticipating an ILS uh, 26 right. So I'll select departure arrival for Vancouver, ILS 26 right. And the Shark 7 arrival. The transition, we're heading over PECA, so we'll select a PECA transition. And then we'll just shift to the legs page and uh, just make sure that it agrees with what's on the uh, Jefferson plate. So it goes overhead PECA, then it's uh, FOSH, then it's ANVAP uh, between flight level 220 and uh, 11000, then CASD. Permix at uh, 250 knots uh, between the 12,000 and 10,000. 
Uh, Tuki out above 10,000. Vancouver VR out above 8,000. And then uh, it's Pemsu at above 3,000, maximum 200 knots. After it's heading 073 for vectors. And then it has Goreg in there next, which is the initial approach fix on the ILS 26 right. I'll just close up the discontinuity. And after that, it's the final approach, or sorry, the final approach fix at uh, Totem. Proceeded by Agnad and 26 right, 50 feet over the threshold, and then the missed approach procedure. So it all looks correct as per the uh, arrival star and the approach plate. It's all right to execute. Execute, John. We're going to have about a 70 degree crosswind off the left, and uh, it's going to be a bit gusty, so it's going to be interesting. What's going to happen now is I'm going to need to brief uh, John on my approach and uh, how we plan for it. He has programmed the box, but our canon procedures are that the flying pilot, which is me, is, has to explain what he's doing, once, one, to brief him, and one, to actually, and secondly, just to familiarize myself with what I'm going to be doing. So, like as we said, uh, John, if you're ready for the briefing. Yes, sure, go ahead. Okay. We're going to be doing the Shark 7 arrival, as we spoke about, in uh, Vancouver, B.C. for 2-6 left and right. We're planning 2-6 right. I'll give him my uh, date because we have to amend the plates every so often, and mine might be out of date uh, compared to his. So I'll say my plate is effective December 20th, 2007. 10-2 Tango is the page number. The cross checks. And that's the one he has. So I basically reread what we just went through. We're coming in from Pekka. Come to Fosh. Across this fix, which is ANVAP between 220 and 11. Then we go to Casti, then to Ermix uh, between 12 and 10, and Jet Aircraft, which is us, must cross it at 250 knots. Then at or above 10,000 feet at Atuki, at or above 8,000 feet at the Vancouver VOR, and then at or above 3,000, max 200 knots at Pemsu. And then if we don't get a clearance to turn in and close up our approach for 26 right, uh, we have to continue out on a 073 heading until they vector us around. Then I go to my approach plate, which is for the, uh, like we said, ILS, DME or ILS radar runway 26 right. So I say this is an ILS approach on runway 26 right. I've got an uh, effective date of May 5th, 2011. The 11-5 is my page number. Localizer frequency 11.95, which I cross-check down here to make sure he's set. Inbound course of 261 degrees, which I cross-check down again to make sure it's set. This is our glide path crossing altitude at the uh, FAF, uh, which is 1540. That allows us to know that the actual glide path that we're following is actually functional. Sometimes you can be misled if there's some erroneous signal coming. You follow this glide path down. If it was to say, if we were to be over the final approach fix uh, and it wasn't 1540, it was something lower, like let's say 1,000 feet, we, I wouldn't cross check, we'd initiate a go around or misapproach, assume the glide slope is inaccurate, and that way, if it was IFR conditions or we were in cloud, it wouldn't uh, be allowed to lead us into the ground. And then I look for my mis uh, decision uh, altitude or my minimums of. Uh, for the ILS, it's 209 feet set on the barometer altimeter. So we're going to set that. And John's already 209 set. I'm just going to leave for a second to uh, talk to a center at uh, 28, uh, 128 West. Okay. The flight level 350. Canada 058 Heavy, Seattle, Center Rogers, Clock 1543. 1543, Air Canada's uh, 058. There's 1543, sorry to interrupt your approach uh, briefing, you may continue. Oh no, that's, uh, I was just about done, and... We uh, check radar contact, Air Canada 058. So there, that basically means that we are under radar coverage now, we are on their screens, on the air traffic control screens, they're following our transponder code, and now they're going to keep an eye on us for not only traffic around us, but to give us either vectors in, 
and cut cut our um, uh, our uh, routing, maybe shorten it up a bit, or uh, give us different uh, different headings towards into the uh, airport. So now it's kind of like Big Brother is watching. We've got uh, the people on the ground. They know exactly what our, where our airplane is, what altitude we're at, and what's around us. So anyway, just to quickly finish up my briefing, because we're starting to get a little closer in. So once I've given them the minimums, I'll tell them that in the event of a go-around, I'll call go-around flaps 20, and I'll read the missed approach. And this is to familiarize myself with it, as well as John. In the event of a missed approach, I will climb to 420 feet on heading 261 degrees, then a right climbing turn heading 291 degrees to 3,000 feet, intercept the outbound radial 259 from the... Uh, Uh, what's that? The Pit Meadows, Pit Meadows. DOR. Thank you. Hold as published at Dutno uh, or 21 DME from Vancouver. Shuttle climb to 5,000 feet before proceeding on course and maximum speed is 200 knots. Sounds like a mouthful. This is normally programmed in the box. It's in there. We've checked that it's actually there. So it'll be an autopilot type missed approach which will meet all these constraints because it does sound like a lot to remember when you're trying to go around and do a mist. So that's all in there. Once we're finished with that, I've finished briefing him, and then I've told him it'll be a flap 25 landing. Which and I'll call you 100 above minnows. Thank you. And then I want, uh, if I could, auto brakes three, please, John. Sure. And uh, we will be taking, this is the ground chart or airport diagram for Vancouver. And this is the way it's situated. Uh, north is straight up like this. We'll be coming along south of the airport, that's our uh, planned uh, arrival, and then we'll be vectored around and we'll be turning uh, left, um, and we should be getting a good view of the city from the left side of the window. We'll come in, line up for 26 right like this, and we'll land and plan to exit, which is Mike 4, so it'll be a left turn off the runway, and then we'll be taxiing in to parking somewhere around here, one of these gates in here. And that's basically a, com a thorough briefing. Once I've completed that, I'll ask John for a pre-descent checklist. Roger. Your captain speaking. Uh, we're 35,000 feet, uh, 172 flying miles to touchdown on runway 26 in uh, Vancouver. Uh, current weather in uh, Vancouver is uh, fairly reasonable. Uh, fairly strong winds out of the south uh, at uh, 20 kilometers an hour, gusting to uh, almost 30 kilometers per hour. Just a, a few clouds in the low level and broken clouds on the high level. Good visibility and a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. Right now we're showing touching down at uh, just after uh, 9.05 uh, local time, 9.10 on the gate. Uh, and if you'd like to reset your watches right now, it's just approaching uh, 8.40 in uh, Vancouver. I'd like to thank you for cho choosing to fly with Air Canada. Hope you enjoyed your vacation, if it was one, in uh, Hawaii. And uh, we thank you for your business. Air Canada 058, contact arrival 1286, 10 advise of your seat. 286 of the seat, Air Canada is, uh, 058. Okay. Victoria, West Jet 015, any chance uh, you can wave the two? Arrival, good evening, Air Canada is uh, 058 heavy, uh, 16.3 for uh, 10,000 speed, 270 or less, doing 270 right now. Air Canada 058 heavy, Vancouver arrival, check the comments, plant 26 right, 2961. 2961, plant 26 right, Air Canada 058. Fisher 239, Vancouver arrival, plant for runway 26 right, altimeter is 2961, reduce your speed to 2109. There's the top of the crossing restriction, 12,000. Vancouver, Canada, 557, 13, port, sending 1, 2,000, with the Air Canada, 058, heavy, descend 4,000. Descend 4,000, Air Canada, 058. Canada, 557, Vancouver, Ravel, runway 26 right, altimeter 2,961. 4,000, set. I check 4,000, set. 26 right, so do you need to speed it easier for Canada, 557? Cafe 888, turn left heading 290, third ILS or visual runway 26 right. Heading 290, third ILS, 26 right, Cafe 888. Flightcraft 309, third straight in ILS, runway 26 left, not below 3000, till final. That's straight in ILS, runway 26 left, not below 3000, till final, flightcraft 309. Air Canada 557, speeds your discretion. Air Canada 557, 
Cat 888, not below 170 knots and clear by totem. Not below 170 knots for totem, Cat 888. Cat 888, you'll join about 9 final. Vancouver Tower now, 119055, good day. 119055, Cat 888, four. The straight line, 310 for the heading, the straight line off of Agnad, please. Inbound Agnad, if I can execute. Execute, please, and I'll take flap one. Okay, okay, one zero five eight, continue left two nine zero to intercept third island approach, runway two six right. Turning to intercept, upon uh, intercept third island, twenty six right, air Canada zero five eight. Two nine zero. Two hundred knots selected. Roger. Thirteen one zero seven, descend to maintain eight thousand. Philippine 107, descend and maintain 8,000. 8,000, Philippine 107. Glacier 239, you'll touch down about 7 in trail. The heavy traffic contact tower now, 119 or 55, Glacier. 255 for Glacier 239, guys. Flightcraft 309, tower now, 187. He's really carving me in here, isn't he? Yeah, it's going to work out well. I check 3,000 cent. Gear down. Gear down, flap 20, landing checklist aligned. Gear down, selected flap 20, selected. 25 flap, BRF 137. BRF 137, what was the width? We check for Canada's uh, 058. 19 to 11. Thank you. 19 to 11. 37, how about 140? 44. 44, sir. 1,000. Are we clear to land, Jeff? Yes, sir, we are. Thank you.
Lights are off, radars are off. Check 767-300 on the board. Thank you very much for riding along with us on our trip from Calgary to uh, Maui and then uh, today from uh, Maui to Vancouver. Uh, we had a great time on the flight uh, and I hope you enjoy watching this. I'd like to as well uh, thank you for coming along. We uh, enjoyed having you along with us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and I hope to see you one day in our cockpit with Air Canada or whichever uh, company you'd like to work for. It's a fantastic job. Get started early, get your hours in, keep the blinders on. It's nothing better than this. Take care and fly safe.